We will now talk about uh, NPM workspaces. And to understand what uh, they are and why we need them, let's first talk about a way in which code can be organized called monorepos. I've made a very simple drawing. Usually applications are or small projects are put into different categories. For example, we might have a server project with its node modules and its package JSON and its implementation and a client that uses this server project which imports the server project and uses its functionality. Well, what are monorepos? Monorepos are a way in which we can organize our code into one big on, or one bigger code base or of packages which are related to one another. Monorepos are very popular at uh, Google. You may search for monorepos and learn more about them. The point is very simple in a monorepo. In a monorepo, we have only one folder that contains the node modules and the dependencies of both projects or other projects. And then we have each project with its own implementation and its own dependencies, but which stay in one node modules folder. This is the implementation that Node.js and NPM brings to the table with a new functionality or its newer functionality called NPM workspaces. Let's now explore this. So I've uh, started a brand new project. I mean, I'm in the same uh, folder. I'm just using a different Git branch. You may create a new empty folder on your computer. Let's first initialize an NPM project right here. I will call NPM init and with the flag I because nobody has the time to answer all these questions. I will, I will clear this. Now we have a package JSON file. Nothing new until now. I just have this Git integration right here. Okay. What I want to introduce now is the workspaces. So I could just simply write here workspaces and uh, populate this right here. But a simple solution would be to use the npm CLI. So I will still call npm init minus y. But this time, let's focus on the terminal npm init minus y. And I will pass here the minus w flag, which stands for workspaces. And I will want two workspaces in a package folder. I will call here workspaces packages slash server. And again, another workspace in packages slash client. Call this. Let's explore this. And as you can see, now we have two packages. And now we have an entry in our main package.json file, which consists of workspaces. And as you can see, we have a workspace with packages server and packages client. Let's explore this right here. And as you can see, we have a packages server and a packages client, each one of them with its own package.json file. We also have some node modules. If you don't have them, let's just first call npm install. And this will create our node modules. They are very interesting. If we check them, you will see that we have these two entries, client and server. And again, VS Code indicates that they are symbolic links, which means that anything that changes inside these packages will be directly reflected in the node modules. Why is this very important? Well, we said in the beginning that our client will import our server or will use functionality from the server. Let's create something very quick in order to understand what uh, I mean. I will create a new file in the server, call it index js and here just let's just export a very basic function so i will say module exports and let's just make a very simple function right here which just prints hello from server all right save this and let's add a dependency to our to our client in the server package.json so if i go to the package.json of our of our client now we, we want to use the server inside the client. 
Here I will have the dependencies. Let's add dependencies right here. And here let's add the dependency to a server. And let's call this the with the latest version. Save this. Again, call npm install. All right. And now in our client, let's create also a file right here. I will call index.js. Let's make a console log right here. Console log. And I will call this inside the client. And let's now import our functionality from the server. So here I will say const server and we call the require and we will require our server. Let's see if our server is working. So let's call this function server and let's now try to run it. So inside our folder, I'm still in the npm practice folder. I will call node and let's go into packages into the client folder and here call the index.js file. Okay, I have a small problem. All right, so I had a typo in the way I was calling this function is with packages, of course. And now if I'm executing this client code, you will see we are inside the client, but we are referencing the code exactly from the server. If I'm going to the server and I'm modifying this file, I will call here update, save and execute the client again. I didn't call any npm install or something. You will see that the code automatically updates. This is very convenient and this is possible because inside the node modules, we are using symbolic links. So we saw until now how we can reference things around reference code using npm workspaces. Let's close everything and let's talk about something else. Inside the package.json, we have an entry with the scripts. And uh, usually all the commands that we learned until now in this course are also valid for certain workspaces. If, for example, we want to call the test, I will call here npm test and it will execute the npm test from the main package.json. But in the same time, we have a package.json in each package. So here, if I will maybe change this, we are in the server. So I will call here test server and without the exit one. And in the client, I will call here again, test client. I can again call the test commands from our packages. Save everything and call npm test, but this time with the flag ws, which stands for workspaces. And as you can see, now this command will call our test commands inside our packages. If I want to, for example, call only a command inside a certain package, I will call npm test and I will specify the workspace. So the workspace with minus w is our packages slash client, for example. And this will only invoke the test inside our client. Inside our project, I can also install different libraries. I can install a library for testing, maybe Jest. I can call npm install Jest, and this will install a library and our node modules will not, will not be so clean. I can call this, install this library and I can use it inside our different packages. I have installed Jest, and now in our client, if I want to use Jest, here I will say jest. Then of course, if I will now want to test the jest, the client, and I will call this, I will get the jest error that of course our packages, our test is not configured, but hey, it executes jest code. Again, if I want to install a package only, only for one workspace, I can call npm install 
For example, maybe in the server I want to use Mocha, I don't want to use Jest, and I want to use Mocha only for the server. I can call npm install Mocha, and I can specify the workspace. So, minus W, packages, server. Install this. This is called a filtered install. And now if I'm expecting in if I'm expecting the package JSON from our server, you'll see that it now has a dependency to Mocha. Let's check a final note and uh, regarding the naming inside our project. We saw before that we can see what is outdated inside our project. So I can call npm outdated and let's see what is it outdated inside our client. So here I will say npm outdated in the workspace packages client. And we will see something pretty interesting. We have the package server, which is current at version one, because this is the way we configured. But it says that its latest version is 1.0.38. Well, this is wrong because uh, this npm outdated will directly check the npm registry. It currently doesn't check npm workspaces even with uh, vs code if i'm checking the package json inside the client and the, i'm looking at our dependencies even if i'm referencing a local dependency it will tell me that i'm using a server js library like this so a better way would be to properly name our packages and not give them so generic names Maybe I will uh, give a name right here and I will call it at npm practice, maybe npm practice slash client or something like this and do the same in, inside the server. Maybe update, update their names and this way there won't be any name collisions. So we saw in this lecture how to use npm workspaces. They are very complex. But you should keep in mind that any npm command that works inside the node project works also inside the node workspace.